Napping is an ancient process originating from the early Pleistocene period, typically used to create sharp edges on flint and obsidian. It has been said that napped obsidian produces the sharpest edge known to humankind. In this video we investigate how true this really is, and how a napped edge compares with modern edge grinding methods. Is it possible to split a single hair measuring less than 70 microns in diameter with a napped edge? Alistair took on the hair splitting challenge, but this first required building a custom setup with a microscope and two micrometer stages to control both the alignment and the axial displacement of the cutting edge. First, Alistair machined some feet to raise an optical breadboard off the bench. The optical breadboard forms an excellent base to bolt the micrometer stages to, and raising it off the bench allows the microscope base to slot beneath it. This micrometer stage needs to be modified to allow mounting to the breadboard. The edges to be tested will be mounted to this stage, and the hair will be mounted to the other one. The resulting action is smooth and precise. The micrometer barrel has a nominal precision of 10 microns, but in reality the positioning accuracy of the system is better than this. Here Alistair shows the positioning of two blocks. The test edges will be clamped to the steel block, and the hair is taped to the brass strip. The hair is then cut to length. We machined an adapter to mount the camera to the microscope, so you can see through the microscope, as if we were looking through the eyepieces. Before we test the flint and obsidian, it is important to test with a control first. In this case we use a razor blade. We know razor blades can cut hair, so if we can't split the hair with this, then something must be wrong with the setup. Thankfully, the hair splits perfectly. In fact, here Alistair managed to split the hair into four pieces with the razor blade. Interestingly though, the split doesn't always follow the direction of the hair. We expected the split to follow the direction of the fibrils which comprise the hair cortex, analogous to a perfectly split piece of wood. The reason for this is because even though the hair appears to have an anisotropic structure, when dry the material between the individual fibrils actually has very similar properties to the fibrils themselves, and so hair actually behaves like an isotropic material. Ok, so what about a hand ground woodworking chisel? It's commonly accepted that chisels need to be super sharp to cleanly slice through wood. This allows woodworkers to make accurate joints. Here Alistair begins sharpening a chisel with a coarse diamond stone, followed by a finer diamond stone, then a ceramic stone, before polishing the edges with a leather strop. The chisel is clamped to a block, which is placed on the micrometer stage. The chisel slices the hair admirably. It appears to cut into four pieces, but this is actually just an optical illusion arising from the polished edge. So how about the napped flint? Alistair selected the sharpest looking napped fragment and carefully set it up, as he did with the razor blade and chisel, but it just wouldn't split the hair. Instead, it just buckled. So what's going on? Perhaps flint isn't as sharp as we thought. Let's have a look at the obsidian instead. Obsidian is a volcanic glass and is well known for its ability to fracture incredibly thin, and thus form sharp edges. Flint napper Dr Don Crabtree achieved edges as thin as 30 angstroms. Alistair managed to achieve some gorgeously thin transparent pieces, surely one of these will do the trick. But as with the flint, the hair refused to split. To better understand what's going on, we decided to quantify the sharpness of the edges. There is a standard method of achieving this, using a piece of equipment called a BESS certified sharpness tester. All this does is measure the maximum force required to perpendicularly slice through a piece of thin wire. 
These devices are quite expensive though, so here we build one of our own, starting with a base to hold the wire in place. These two blocks clamp the so-called clip, which is how the wire is held from the manufacturer. This unit will then be placed on a weighing scale, which we will film to extract the force at the point the edge cuts through the wire. To keep the translation of the edge smooth, Alistair now makes a fixture to mount the cutting edges in the milling machine. The milling machine quill feed enables precise advancement of the cutting edges. The fixture is very simple. Starting with hexagonal bar, one end is turned round so it fits in a collet, and the other end is machined to accept a clamp which holds the edge for testing. As before, we start with a razor blade. The razor blade breaks through the wire at a force of 39 grams, and the chisel breaks through at 125 grams. These values are in line with what we would expect, so we are confident in the test setup. Let's test the flint next. The flint breaks through the wire at 230 grams. This seems to agree with the hair splitting experiment. And finally, how does the obsidian perform? terribly. In fact, so poorly that the wire usually gets pulled out of the clip before the obsidian can slice through it. Upon close inspection, the reason behind this is clear. The cutting edge is so thin and fragile, it simply breaks before it has the opportunity to cut the wire. This raises some questions. Although obsidian may well be the sharpest edge, what does this really mean? If the edge is too thin to be practical, can it actually be called sharp? It's feasible that a thicker obsidian edge would perform better on the BESS test because of its higher strength. Charlie wanted to take this to the next level and actually measure the edge radius of the razor blade and obsidian. Unfortunately, even using the world's fanciest light microscopes, this level of metrology is just too close to the diffraction limit to resolve the cutting edge. So Charlie uses an approach called Atomic Force Microscopy, or AFM. An AFM works by traversing a very, very tiny probe over a surface and then measuring that probe deflection with a laser and a photodiode. Rather than measuring the shape directly, which would be a real challenge to set up in the AFM, Alistair transfers the shape of the cutting edge to a thin piece of lead, which Charlie then mounts in the machine. Lead is a super soft material, and this particular variant is pure and annealed, which makes it easy to imprint the edge shape into the material. The samples are made by punching out lead discs, flattening them between two plates, and then gently pressing the edge on the metal disc. Of course, subsequent handling of these specimens must be done with great care to ensure the blade imprint is not damaged. To help explain the process, I will introduce an analogy made with a piece of wood and some blue tack. The piece of wood shown here represents the blade that we are measuring. First though, we need to sharpen it, which I do here with a plane. The blue tack represents a lead disc. By pressing the wood into the blue tack, an imprint is made, just as you saw with the razor blade and lead. The animation of the AFM you saw earlier in the video was of course a simplification. In modern AFM, the probe, in this case a pencil tip, is vibrated at a high frequency as it is rastered across the surface, and then the amplitude of the vibration is measured. The Z height is controlled with a feedback loop to maintain a constant amplitude, and the corresponding topography is extracted from the Z data. Charlie uses carbon tape to mount the lead disc to a small plate, which will go into the AFM. Rolling a cotton bud over the lead disc is a great way to apply gentle pressure to the fragile specimen without damaging the surface. Under the inspection microscope, the impression on the lead disc can be easily seen. And here's what the probe looks like, although the bit you're really looking at here is the silicon cantilever, 
and the probe tip is right at the end of this. This cantilever needs to be carefully aligned with the laser before measurements can be taken. Ok, that's enough on the setup, let's have a look at the results. Here's a 3D topographical representation of the razor imprint followed by the obsidian. If we plot the razor blade first, the cross section looks something like this, complete with 3 sigma confidence intervals shown by the light blue regions. We applied an analytical fit to the data which enabled us to extract the tip radius and the included angle of each edge. This fit is shown by the dotted red line. The obsidian looks rougher and there was more variation along the length of the cut which increases the uncertainty. You can see from the fit that we're not characterising the secondary radius which was only present over very short lengths. Even ignoring the secondary edge in the fit, the obsidian was still significantly sharper than the razor blade which is interesting and confirms our earlier theory that the obsidian is just too brittle for most real world applications. Although there are various approaches to measuring sharpness, the method remains the same, irrespective of the edge being tested. An edge designed to cut through a single cell surely should not be quantified with the same test as a butcher's knife. Perhaps what we really need is an application dependent sharpness standard. I will now pass over to Hazel to introduce the sponsor of this video. Learning how to analyse experiments and data doesn't have to take years of formal education. There's actually a fun and easy way to develop these skills in your free time. Brilliant is the best way to learn maths, data science and computer science interactively. Their courses are fun and intuitive with thousands of lessons from basics to advanced topics and new lessons added every month. Whatever your skill level, Brilliant customises content to fit your needs and lets you solve at your own pace. If you get stuck, there are helpful hints and step-by-step -step solutions to get you back on track. If you're feeling inspired by this video but don't know where to start, why not try Brilliant's Data Analysis Fundamentals course? With interactive exercises, such as plotting your own graphs, you'll learn by doing right from the first lesson. To try everything Brilliant has to offer, free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash Cronova Engineering or click on the link in the description. The first 200 viewers to sign up will get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription.